The old is gone and the new is here. So in honor of the new year, I have 23 things that I learned running in 2023. What's up, everybody? This is Tucker dropping in today to wish you a very happy new year. Yeah, 23 is over, 2024 is here. I don't know about you, but I always use the end of the year to reflect, to gather my thoughts, get an idea of how the year went and how I can learn from the last year and take it into the next one. If this is your first time or your 100th time, this channel is for ultra running and adventure travel. It's where I get to put some of my experience, my learning, my inspiration, share it with you, hopefully in a way that helps you on your running and your travel journey. I wanna get right into it today. Here are 23 three things that I learned running through 2023. For your sake and mine, I'm going to keep this moving. There are a lot of them, but I believe each of them has been influential in my running journey and would be helpful for you in one way or another. Let's start at the bottom and work our way to the top. Number 23, the mixtape you made at 17 will always be your best running playlist. What I mean by this is the music you played for yourself at 17 that you got into and then hardwired into your brain will always be most influential music for you. Use that and tap into it for your running and your training. Pop in that music you were listening to back in high school and see what it does for you. And next for number 22, flip it on its head, turn off the music. And I know that's the opposite of the last one, but use these in pairs, try it side by side. Turn off the music, listen to your thoughts, listen to the environment and use those as motivation in your running. Number 21, the tool of visualization really works. When it comes to time on the trail, in your training, on the race course, visualizing it in your head first makes it real for your mind and your body. So once you come to race day, or come to your hard workout. You've already performed that in your head and it's just executing. Up next, number 20, trust the training. There will inevitably come a time for all of us in the training, whether it's a week in or it's a week out from the race, there will come a moment where you will doubt yourself, that you'll doubt the amount of time you put into it, that you're doing what you need to do. If you built a plan and you have been following that plan, trust the process to get you to the starting line. And once you reach that point, just let it go. You've already done what you need to do. And number 19, be content with your current current capabilities. And what I mean by that is we all have a certain measure of time in our life. Yes, push yourself. If you only have a certain amount of margin, go ahead and give it the time that you have, not the time that you hope for or that you wish. Give yourself the grace to squeeze the running in where you have the time for it. You're only capable so far as you're allowed to give it time in your life. And number 18, super simple and basic, don't leave home without lube or tape ups. Uh, as you can see, I probably have them right here. I leave them always within arm's reach. I actually leave this stuff in the car just in case I need it at the trail. If you happen to travel or going to a race day or just going for a Saturday run with friends, the environment could change drastically from wherever you are. So just being prepared with that. I find that I can almost run anything as long as I don't have chafe. That's just me, but I don't want to leave home without it. Number 17, preparation is key. I actually made videos about this in my UTMB preparation. I found that if I prepare, if I schedule out my training in advance, if I block it into my schedule, I I feel more at peace about the effort that is required on that day. It means that I know what is gonna be expected of me in the day, in the week, in the month ahead. And it relieves a lot of that mental energy that can sometimes go into training. Number 16, the distance does not matter. I have found that it's the act, the intention, the attention given to it that matters most. If I'm running and my mind isn't there, then it doesn't matter how long I go or how far I've taken myself because I wasn't really in it. So if my mind is in it, then I always find that the miles follow. Number 15, don't chase diet solutions. They really aren't gonna get you anywhere. Focus on what works for you, what fuels you best, what you enjoy eating the most. If it's balanced and healthy, if it gives you the good energy and leaves you most inspired and ready to run, then that's all that really matters to me. There are so many diets you can chase to try and maximize, but I think at the end of the day, for a lot of runners, it's probably just a waste of time. So just focus on what works for you. Number 14, running has gotten really expensive. Yeah, I kind of learned that. I knew it all along, but it's a shocking revelation when you start adding up the cost of shoes, gels, snackies, race fees, travel. You don't have to do that when you're running. If you want to train and get a coach, then that's a cost. If you want to put the miles in and get some nice shoes to do it, then that's a cost. And if you want to race, show up at a marathon or an ultra marathon, or even a 10K or a half marathon on the weekend, all these race fees are really starting to add up. And that's not why I got into running to begin with. I just got into it because I thought it was a fun, enjoyable way to stay fit and to get outside and explore. And now over the years, I've just found that the costs have gotten higher and higher. 
My takeaway from that, to just follow the path that works best for you. You don't have to race. You don't have to buy the nicest shoes. You can put together your own 50K with your friends and run that for free. We don't have to race just for a buckle or for a medal. Sure, if you have the cash to do it, it is fun and it's worth training towards, but we don't have to do that to go out and run and accomplish our running goals. And number 13, piggybacking off of that, the shoe doesn't really matter. Yeah, you wanna find shoes that generally work best for you, but if you're 75% of the way there and the shoe mostly works for you, then just go with that. You can spend your running life chasing the next shoe and the next shoe and the next shoe. I find that I'm just wasting time and overthinking it. So just find a shoe that mostly works and stick with that. All right, so we're most of the way there. If you find this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and maybe share it with somebody else who might find it helpful too. Moving on, dozen left, here we go. 12, rest matters as much as the running. I know that might be ridiculous to say to some of you, if you are putting yourself out there all the time and not giving your body to rest, then you're basically a ticking clock waiting for it to implode. I have had it happen to myself before. Your body needs intentional, proactive times for rest and recovery. That's good, long periods of sleep, potentially early to bed, late to rise, naps. I don't know, I love a good nap. That's giving both your body and your mind intentional time to recover. Number 11, trail and race etiquette is incredibly important. This comes out of my time running UTMB in Europe. I found that people from all over the world ran differently. They interacted with each other differently. They engaged with the race course, the spectators, the volunteers, and the runners differently. And I'm not gonna say what people I think are more friendly or more rude, but it was just a takeaway for me to realize that trail and race etiquette is so important. So when you're out on the trail and a Saturday, say hi to people, smile at people. When you're at a race, say thank you, high five people. If you are having fun, then you can help them have fun. Moving on, number 10, pacing, crewing, supporting, and cheering are as much fun as the running itself. If you have a free Saturday and there's a race nearby, if you have a friend and they're running, go ahead and cheer them on. And if you have a little bit of extra time, go ahead and support them at an aid station. And if you have the physical capacity to support them as a racer, there is no better gift you can give to a racer than going out and pacing them at a race course getting them across the finish line. And number nine, speaking from experience, if you are gonna show up at a race and pace them, you better come prepared. There's nothing more embarrassing than showing up to pace a runner and vomiting on the race course because you can't handle it. Just be prepared for what you're getting into. Trust me, I speak from experience. I learned this one the hard way. And on to number eight, the Ocho. Not everything is content. I realize saying that into the camera right now, but we live in a world where everybody's gotta share everything. Sometimes just leaving your phone home is the best way to go out and experience the world around you. Go enjoy the run. You don't need to take photos. You don't need to take video. Again, I realize what I'm doing right now, the sharing into a camera. I'm as guilty of this as anyone, but it is a practice that I am trying harder to implement in my own running. And on to seven, lucky number seven, running is a team effort. When I first got into this, I started doing it because I just needed a pair of shoes and some shorts to go out and run. And it was a very solitary experience. And the act of running can be, but in order to execute it well, it takes an entire family. It takes a whole team of people, whether that's coaches, crewing, volunteering, pacing. That's just on race day. But the friends, the family, the co-runners that we share the trail with on Saturdays, even people that I turn to in places like this to learn from, this is an entire community of people that I rely on to be a better runner. Thank you to all of you who helped me be a better runner. But also don't forget, when you came back from your long run on Saturday or crossed the finish line at your race, there were probably dozens or maybe even hundreds of people that helped you get there. And on to number six, when in doubt, just run. The way I see it, it's kind of like Forrest Gump just stepping off of his porch and running. I mean, what was the guy wearing? Nikes on his feet, khakis, and a button-down shirt. He wasn't overthinking it. As you might know, running is a very big part of my mental health journey. I try to be honest with it here because it is a big part of my life. But when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling blue, might be hitting that ceiling of depression from time to time, the best thing for me to do is to not overthink whether or not I have to put a long run in. It's just to put my shoes on and go out for a mile. And maybe that mile might turn to three or five or 10, but that's not really what matters. What matters is reinforcing that I can do this, that I like to do this. When in doubt, don't overthink it. Put your shoes on and just go for a run. Number five, coming down to the wire. Nobody cares. I cannot tell you how many times I try and remind myself of this because it is the truth. If I am overthinking something, if I am wondering, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? It's probably because in the back of my mind, I'm telling myself what I think other people should be seeing or other people would be doing. Who cares what I look like? Who cares how I look when I run? It doesn't matter because nobody cares how fast you are, what your finish time was, what you wore on your feet. It doesn't matter. Just go out and be your best self in the moment that you have. 
number four of the 23 things that I learned running in 2023 was solving my hydration problems. If you are an athlete of any kind, odds are hydration is something that you are constantly playing with. Well, heading into the year, I had no idea just how big of a problem that I was having with my hydration. So long story short, you can check out the video up here. I went and got a sweat test, found out that I was hydrating all wrong. If I can recommend to you in the next year, teach yourself how to hydrate properly. Go find a professional to help you do that. Find out how much you're sweating and what your electrolyte loss is in your sweat. I'm telling you, it will revolutionize your running. Number three, keep running fun. By all means, train hard, work your butt off to become the best runner you can be. That's why we get up at dawn on Saturday when everybody else is sleeping and run in the cold or the hot. So in those moments when you find yourself getting run down or ragged or tired or wondering why you're doing it, just look through fresh eyes and remember that you do it because it's fun. So go find a new trail. Whatever running requires from you in that moment, you have the chance to make it a fun and exciting new adventure. So even when it's hard, it can still be fun. Almost there, number two, comes from my direct experience of training and running UTMB. Finishing UTMB 23 taught me how to play the long game. And by long game, I mean see this as a lifelong experience that it's meant to be. When I first put UTMB on my bucket list over 10 years ago, I didn't imagine that it would take seven years just to qualify. And then once I qualified for it and registered, that it would take another four years of a pandemic and illness to then be able to execute on that registration and finally finish in September 2023. Now I didn't imagine it would take that amount of time, but I'm so glad that I committed to it because I was the better, stronger runner that I had to be in order to finish the race when I did. And my final takeaway from 2023, number one, running for a cause will change how you run forever. I've always had a big place in my heart in giving back and providing value and supporting others in the ways that I can. It's one of the reasons I like doing this channel is I get to give back to you, hopefully, and sharing things that I learn along the way. Way. But I never directly applied it to my training or my racing. And I didn't realize how big of a hole that was leaving in my training experience. So for UTMB 2023, you may have seen, I partnered with Homes for Homes. And together with a lot of you, we raised funds to build a home for a family in need in Africa. $4,000. That's not a small amount of money. And I realized that that sacrifice was for a lot of you, not just for me. In putting the time, the energy, and the commitment towards training, it meant that I got to leave something lasting behind. Not just a medal or a finish line photo, but a significant life-changing gift for others. And I know that that is going to be the biggest contribution to my training, to my exploring, my adventuring, my racing moving forward. That if I get to live in a way that brings beauty and value and benefit to others in need, then I'm going to use every opportunity to do that. And even if it is just running, that can be a life-changing experience for others too. So there you have it. That's 23 things that I learned running through 2023. I really hope that at least one of these will be helpful for you. I would love to learn from you as to some of the things that you learned running. For me, I put in thousands of miles, hundreds of hours, tons of time traveling around the world of 2023 to run races, to train, to share my experience with you and I would hope that you can return that for me as well. So please leave that in the comments below. What were some of your takeaways from running in 2023 and maybe what you're most excited about running in 2024? All right, thanks for sticking with me on this long list here. I appreciate your time. Go ahead and hit that like button. It helps me know that this was helpful for you and hit subscribe to travel along with me on this journey of ultra running and adventure travel. I wish you a very happy and safe year ahead full of wonderful and exciting adventures. Safe travels, happy trails, take care.